We thank you for life. We thank you for provision. We thank you for guidance. We thank you for protection. We thank you for the testimony that you have given unto us and the blessings. We return all glory unto you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. That this morning our garden is unto you, not unto any man. We ask that you will speak to us. The entrance of your word give it light. As your word will comfort even this morning. Holy Spirit, you will bruise upon every heart. That your word that we will hear even this morning will be profitable unto us. They will not stand against us on the judgment day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Once again, you are welcome to the presence of the Almighty God. You are welcome to the third month and our team for this month being rooted and built up in Christ. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, this month, for the rest of your life, make sure you are deeply rooted. Praise the Lord. Be rooted in Christ. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. As ye therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. As Christians, it's so important to establish a strong root in Christ. We see a lot of things that are going on in the body of Christ today, and at times you wonder, are these people Christians? Are they child of God? You see some things that are happening even in church today that are not happening in the world. You begin to wonder, what type of faith do they have? You see, I'll give you an illustration. There are times you come across some children. And you see the way they behave. You begin to wonder, do they have parents? How were they brought up? Who trained them? Who gave back to this one? Is it not the same thing translated to the spirit realm as a child of God? The way you behave at times, the way you do things, people will see and they wonder and say, is this a child of God? What type, what type of Christ did you receive? Is it different from the same Christ? You begin to wonder. You see a lot of Christians today, you wonder, what type of Christianity are they practicing? I pray even this morning that the Lord will take us deeper in him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because as children of God, if we are going to live out our purpose as followers of Christ, we must be deeply rooted. If we are not rooted in Christ, we cannot fulfill the purpose of God for our life. And I pray this morning that the Lord Almighty, by his mercy and his grace, the Holy Spirit will take us deeper. In the mighty name of Jesus. When we talk about root, what is root? We all know, we, are, we all see plants all around us. We know that root by its nature, they grow deep. You don't see root outside. Any root that you see outside, I mean, it's only, um, I, I've forgotten my agriculture or something. Huh? We have perennial crop, we have uh, the other crop, I have forgotten. That this, you know, like corn, you see the root, it will shoot up, you will see it outside. And when the wind blows, you just blow it off. Simple. So by nature, roots grow deeper. So when you see people, at times you see a lot of people, though they say they are a child of God, you can see them being zealous, being doing things, but their root is not deep in Christ. And that's why they are easily tossed to and fro. And a little thing can derail them from Christ because their root is not deep. Any plant that the root is not deep, when the storm comes, it can easily be uprooted. So the root determines everything about a plant. The nutrient that you will feed, how, it will be, how healthy it's going to look at, the type of fruit it's going to bear, how healthy the fruit will be, the root will determine. How it will be able to stand the winter time, the storm time, the, 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 the spring time, the root will determine how deep the root is. I have a bitter leaf plant. I don't take care of it. During winter, the thing will freeze and just dry up. 
At times, I thought he's dead. It will not even live again. But when spring comes, you see it springing forth again. Because I'm sure the root has gone deep where to tap water. I pray this morning that the Lord will take us deeper. Amen. There is a song we used to sing. Say, I will grow a little deeper. Jesus' loss must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet. I will dig, I will dig a little deeper. Jesus' loss must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet. Are you ready this deeper for God? As believers and children of God, if you don't have root, that you'll be told fro. One thing you have to know about truth, every plant has their own root. And any other plant that grows on another plant, what is it called in science? Parasite. We all know what a parasite. Any other plant that grows on another plant is a parasite because it does not belong to that plant. They call it parasite. So I want to ask you this morning, what type of Christians are you? Are you a parasite Christian? Have you grown yourself? Or when you, somebody, you see, there are several Christians today when, when, when other brethren are not there, they can't live their life for Christ. They can, they can be tossed to and fro. You see them going the other way. And when they see other people, they begin to change. That's a parasite. You need to have your own route. You cannot take a decision on your own that I will stand for Jesus. There are some of us today, our root depends on social media, the generation we are. It's what the social media is saying. That's where you tap. That's what determines how you, you will serve God. There are several people today that have misled people that are on social media. And they have gone back to God and repented and made their way right. And some are still carrying the wrong things that they had. And some will die in that state. What type of Christian? Are you? Being rooted in Christ, establish strong root of foundation in Christ. Rooting yourself means you are, you are establishing a strong faith and reliance on Jesus so that you will not be tossed to and fro. You are, you, are, you are establishing your faith that come what may, that Jesus shall reign. Come what may, I will stand for Jesus. Well, no matter what I'm facing, I will stand. In terms of persecution, I will stand. In terms when others refuse to follow God, if it's only me that is remaining, I'm going to go. That's when your root is deep in Christ. You have established. You have a strong faith. And you rely on Jesus. There are several of us today, we only come to Jesus because of bread and butter. When the bread is no, when the manna is no longer coming, you don't see people again. You don't see them. They easily, they, they go back. And that's why Jesus, people were following Jesus on that day because he can provide them bread, food. But when he now ministered to them, they said, ha, ah, this is a hard saying. The Bible recorded that on that day, several of them went back because they could not take it. And Jesus turned and asked his disciples, he said, where do we go, Master? We have no other place. Are you a disciple or you are a convert? Converts will always live when there are challenges because their root is not deep. But a disciple will stay because they firmly believe on this God. When you are doing a planting, the type of soil you plant, you do, this, you do the planting, the nature of the soil will determine how far the, 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 the tree or whatever thing you are planting will grow or mature. And the extent that you can have. You have seen some plants that you have in-house. Some of these plants are in-house. You use it as, a, you know, a strong in your house to decorate. But when you go to some other places and you see them in the bush, they are mighty trees. You begin to wonder. Because the way where they were, they were constrained. They could not grow. They could not blossom. And there are believers today where they have found themselves. The type of food that they are eating, the type of word that they are hearing could not make them to grow, to, have, to, to grow to their full potential, what God has made them to be. And that's why it's very, very important as a child of God, 
the type of messages you listen to, what you feed your man is very important. We determine how deep you will go. I pray this morning, as many of us that have been feeding our spirit man wrongly, you begin to feed them aright in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you begin to feed them aright in the mighty name of Jesus. Because if you don't feed your spirit man aright, you can grow deep. Your root will not be deep. And you cannot be a mighty tree. If you want to be a tree in the kingdom of God, a mighty tree, you need to grow. And the Lord Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. When we talk about your root being deep in Christ, it's in your closet. It's what you do in your closet. It's not when you come outside, that's just a showroom. It's what you do at the back room, at the back end. Not the one that you show everybody. Some of us, we can sing, we can dance. In your closet, do you sing for God? Do you dance? In your closet, some of us, it's only when we come to church, we read our Bible. Some of us, it's only when we come to church, we pray. A story was given of a man of God that went to a house. He went to a house, and they invited him. He got there, and um, he had a dinner. And when he was leaving, so the spoon that they used in eating, so he kept the spoon in their Bible and he closed it. And when he left, the wife looked for the golden spoon. He couldn't find it. He said, ah, this pastor stole our spoon. You see, that's why I say you should not be inviting the pastor. And after several months, they saw the pastor. He said, ah, pastor, we are looking for our golden spoon you used to eat. You didn't see it. He said, ah, when you get home, open your Bible. It's in there. That means they never read their Bible. I told you of a true story. One of these celebrities that he was asking, telling his mother, mother, they are about evicting me out. I've forgotten his name. He's one of these um, comedians. Kevin Hart. Yeah, that's a true story. The mother kept the money he needed for his house rent in his Bible. He said, Mom, I said, go and read your Bible. I said, Why go and read your Bible? The money he needed. The money, Mom wrote it and put it in his Bible. But he never read the Bible. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So when you are deeply rooted, you will not be tossed to and fro by false do doctrines that are going around this day. Some will tell you, when you're born again, once you are born again, you are forever saved. That's a doctrine from the pit of hell. The Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and what? Say, any man that stands, you take it, let's do what? <laughs> Some will tell you, once you are born again, you are forever born again. Some will tell you, what you do is your spirit man that becomes born again. What you do with your body doesn't really matter. Who says so? That's a doctrine from the pit of hell. And some will tell you, salvation is gradual. It's not gradual, it's instant. It's neither you are saved or you are not saved. That's the basic truth. If you are deeply rooted, you will not condone evil. You will not join people to do evil. You will not see because maybe the person is even the one paying your rent and is doing evil and you support them. Even if they are your children, you will tell them the truth. So when you are deeply rooted, you will be like an oak tree. That the root is down. The root goes deep, even during strong wing. Because the root has gone so deep, it stands firm. I pray this morning that God will take you deeper in him. That no matter what is going on in the world, you will stand for Christ. I say you will stand for Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Is your spiritual life more like, an, is, is it like an oak tree that has grown deep? If you only have one or two roots in your spiritual life, those roots can easily be uprooted. You know there are some plants, their root is just like this. You can just pull it out. Any little thing, it will blow it off. Any little thing. That's why you see some people, oh, is, is this style that is going on now? They move to it. Is this one? They move again. Is this one? They move again. They are tossed to and fro. Oh, some will tell you, oh, the Bible didn't say you should pay tight. They moved here. Oh, you should pay tight. They moved here. Oh, don't do they moved here. Because they don't, they are not rooted in Christ. Oh, it's up that is why you see a lot of people. People are running after shadow. Rather than pursuing the substance. Who is the substance? 
Who is the substance? So what is a shadow? A shadow, they are the blessings that follow us. But there are a lot of people today, when they say, oh, it's happening there, that's where they are going. Your life is not rooted in Christ. When your root is deep down, no matter, when you see a palm tree, when you see an iroko tree, when you see an oak tree, when there are famine, it doesn't affect them because the root is what? It's down deep. You know where we are st standing now? We are standing on top of water. How many of us believe that? How many of us believe that? Because that's why when they drill, they will find what? So when you grow deep in Christ, everything that you needed, the, root, the nutrient that is needed to sustain you is there. So you will not be tossed to and fro. You will not be blown by wings of doctrine because you will be focused and you know where you are going. Lord Almighty will keep us. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, being rooted in Christ can also be described as establishing your life foundation in Christ. As we can see, let's read a concept in Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 verse 47. Luke chapter 6, verse 47 to the end. I will show you what it's like when someone wants to come to me, listen to my teaching. Listen to my teaching and then follow it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on a solid rock. Then when the flood water rises and breaks against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and does not obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floor sweeps down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruin. Jesus was telling his disciples, when you hear the word of God, and you decide to do otherwise, you are building on the wrong foundation. When you don't obey God, you are building on the wrong foundation. When you believe it's what the social media is saying that should determine your life, you are building on the wrong foundation. You see a lot of people, they say, because they bully them in the social media, they commit suicide. I begin to wonder, why should the social media define you, whom you are? So we must know, Jesus said, when you hear the teaching of mine and you do it, it, then you are building on a solid foundation. So which word of God have you been disobeying? It's like you are building a house. As you are building a structure, each time that you fail to take care of a particular thing, maybe a word came for you to correct that life, you say it doesn't matter. And you are building. That, that house will be crooked. That life will be crooked. And that's why you see a lot of Christians today, their life are crooked. Because there are some certain things God has been wanting them to take care of. They refuse to take care of it. And you see the life crooked. This morning, that every word that you have been hearing, the Lord will help us to obey him fully. I say God will help us to obey him fully. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you build your life on Christ and his word, you are building a strong foundation for your life. Just like a house that is built on a rock, when, when your life is built on Christ, you'll be able to stand firm during fires or storm. That, that is a hymn we used to sing. Will your anchor hold in the storm of life? Will your anchor hold in the storm of life? And the chorus say, I have an anchor that feels that so sure and fast when the billows roll. Face to that rock which cannot move, stand as sure and sure in the Savior's. Will your anchor hold? People that the anchor will hold will only be those who are deeply rooted in Christ. And that's why you see some people, they'll say, well, I've seen people saying God failed them. 
And because God failed them, they decided not to serve God again. Some, because they made a request from God and God did not answer. They said, well, I don't think God is not really again. I have to go, I have to look for help elsewhere. But I pray that our anchor we hold. I say, I pray that our anchor we hold in the mighty name of Jesus. So being rooted in Christ is building your foundation and let it be centered in G on Jesus. Jesus is the key to standing firm in our faith. Jesus is the key. Is the key. And I pray this morning that he will hold us in the mighty name of Jesus. When things are not built properly on a proper foundation, there will always be a dear consequence. When your life, there are several Christians today, their lives are built on falsehood. Their lives are built on deceit. Their lives are building on cheating people. Their life are building, you know, fake life. I remember several years ago, one of our senior pastors, he said, he went to somebody's office. As he was coming, he just saw a lady. He's even a lady. I mean, in Africa. I mean, here, it's normal for a lady to, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not strange to see a lady smoking here. Is that true? But in Africa, I've seen a lady smoking. <laughs> it's, it's to the extreme. Um, you know, it's, this is a worker in the church and everything. True life story. It's, as soon as he entered their lobby like this, he saw her, when, you know, when they have break, and he just put that him. And here, past came. This, the slippery rock is inside her mouth. She could not bring it out. And her husband is <laughs> life. I was telling somebody, they, you know, they put all the children together in church on workers' meeting and say, Tell us what your dad does in the evening. He said, my dad drink Gouda. My dad drinks uh, stout. I mean, children will not lie. Children will never lie. They don't lie. He said, that's what my dad, I mean, what type of life is that? It should not be. A life that is built. Some of us, the life we are building, the children are looking at it. So that's why we must build our life. And even some of us, what type of, if your life is built on Christ and your root is deeper, even in your place of work, they will know that you are a child of God. There are several of us, they don't know us in our place of work that we are Christians. Because the way, of, the way we live our life, we compromise. Easily, we join them. They will tell you, oh, if you can't beat them, join them. Who says so? Daniel stood out. He was deeply rooted. He stood out. Even when they conspired against him, he did nothing. He still stand out. Did God defend him? Yes. So we must know that. So when we don't build on the wrong foundation, it has a dear consequence. And most of the times it is visible. At times it is not visible. And when you get to a place, that's why they say anything you don't take care of, as you go to the top, they it to be exposed. I pray this morning. That whatever thing that is wrong with our foundation, we will build it, we will rebuild it in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will make our root to be deeper, even in Christ, in Jesus' name. Because God wants us, when our root is deep in Christ, He wants us, He wants our life to be as we have it in Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. Jeremiah 17, verse 8. That's how God wants our life to be when we are deeply rooted in Christ. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. They are like trees planted along the river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. I pray that will be your testimony. That will be your testimony and that of your household. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because when you are deeply rooted, you will not be bothered. Nothing will bother you. And your life will blossom in every area. In the mighty name of Jesus. In that verse, uh, you know, that, that, that's our text that we read in Colossians 2, 6 to 7. He, you know, he concluded, he said, abandon with thanksgiving. And today is a day of thanksgiving. And one thing I want us to know is that as Christians, God wants to abound in thanksgiving. We are not to give thanks occasionally. Or we are not to give thanks when things are okay, when things are good for us. 
God wants us to give thanks. When you are deeply rooted in Christ, you will give thanks always. Because if God opens your eyes, why you allow some things to happen? All you want to do is to say, thank you, Lord. And that's why he said, you know, in, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he said, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. No matter your circumstance, you find yourself. With the help of God, you can maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. To so know is the Lord Almighty, is God, and there is nothing that happened to us that he doesn't know. So, abounding in thanksgiving, about which, you know, Paul was saying that Colossians is that the easiest way that we must give thanks, whether it is convenient or not. And the Lord Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, cultivate the habit to give thanks always. How do we stay rooted in Christ? Number one, receive Jesus Christ into your life. Number two, learn and be instructed. When God is instructing you and you obey, there is no way you can be rooted in him. Number three is that you have a grateful heart, always appreciating God, even in your life and in your family. And number four is that do not follow the way of the world. Psalm 1 verse 1. Do not follow the way of the world. Several of us today, we say, well, this is the trend of things that are going. The way of the multitude is not always that of God. Churches can be doing it. That doesn't mean it is right. Oh, it can be a bishop that is doing it. It can be a general overseer that is doing it. It doesn't mean that is right. And that's why the Bible tells us in the book of Ruth, look it up unto who? Unto Jesus. Not unto the pastor or unto the bishop. There are several people today, they are not serving the Lord because of what one pastor did, one minister did, one bishop, one evangelist, one general overseer did. No. They are not, they are, they, they, they are not the one that died for you. They are not the one that is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only one who has walked through this way perfectly. And that's why he's a perfect example. And that's why you have to look up unto him. So, don't follow the way of the world. Keep good company. Some of us, we say we are believers. You say you are a child of God. There is an addict in Africa that says, show me your friend. And I will do what? Tell you whom you are. And as an idea that equally says that a good child does not walk circumstantially. That is walking where people will be suspecting you. Eh? You must know that. Keep good company. Delight in God's word. Let the word of the Lord be your joy, be a strength to you. Some of us, we don't want to hear the word of God. As when you are reading where, you see, when somebody, you know, do you know that at times when somebody is correcting you, you are doing something wrong and they are saying it, how do you feel? You feel hot, is that not? You feel, so when the word of God is pricking your heart, know that God is speaking to you. Don't feel offended. As this message is coming forth, now don't feel offended, oh, maybe pastor is talking about me. Oh, maybe, No! It's because it's, the Bible says is the, the whom the Father loveth. He does what? He chastises. We have seen, we have heard the story of children that, you know, we were told. I don't know. The boy wanted to die. He has been stealing right from Kritu. The, the mother never corrected him. That it's not good. And he was eventually called to be executed. He said, Mama, come. I have a message for you. The mother thought he wanted to tell him where he kept some money. And he chopped up the mother's ear. And he said, you never corrected me. Please, be delighted in God's word as he sent his word even unto us. And lastly, meditate up on the scripture. The only way you can grow deep is through what? Through the word. You know, if you don't eat physically, how do you look like? Eh? You look tired, weak, and begin to lose weight. Likewise, spiritually, when you don't feed your spirit, this is the food. When you read the word, it guides you. It enlightens your heart. It enlightens you and it gladdens your heart. I pray even this morning that you will be rooted in Christ. As we bow down our head to pray, are you here this morning? You know deep down in your heart that your root is not deep. You know, I mean, you will know 
If you are not deep in Christ, you know. You know. You know that you are keeping wrong companies. You know you are going the way of the multitude. Maybe you are here or you are hearing us. You have joined us online even this morning. You want God to take you deeper. I want you to put your hand on your chest and ask the Lord and say, Father, this morning I'm coming back unto you. I want to be replanted. I want you to replant me afresh, oh Lord, so that I can go deeper in you. If you are praying that prayer, put your hand in your chest and ask the Lord and say, Father, this morning I want you to replant me, oh Lord. I know I've uprooted myself from you. Father, replant me, O oh Lord. Replant me in you, O oh Lord. And take me deeper in you, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray and ask the Lord even this morning. And say, my Father, my God, replant me, O oh Lord. Replant me. Replant me, O oh Lord. Wherever I've walked astray, I've gone astray from you. I've heard even this morning that except I'm properly planted in Christ, there is no way I can enjoy the full benefit that is in Christ. Let's pray and ask the Lord Almighty. And those of us who have been planted, you know you are not being, you are, you are not tossed to and fro. Ask the Lord and say, Father, take me deeper in you. Take me deeper in you. Make me to grow deeper in you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray and ask the Lord even this morning. And say, my Father, my God, take me deeper in you, O Lord. Take me deeper in you, O Lord. Take me deeper in you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Take me deeper in you, O Lord. Help me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray and ask the Lord Almighty. That the Lord Almighty will take you deeper in him. In the name of Jesus. That on your daily walk with God, you will grow deeper each day, each day. You will grow deeper in His world. You will grow deeper in His love. You will grow deeper in your commitment of in working with God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word of life you have brought even to us even this morning. That we need to be rooted in Christ. Lord, we pray this morning, as many, O oh Lord, that their root is shallow. Father, I pray this morning, you will take them deeper in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, as many, O oh Lord, that have compromised their faith and their root has been uprooted, that I pray this morning, as many that have prayed that prayer, you will replant them in you, O oh Lord. And as you replant them in you, let nothing be able to approve them again from you in the name of Jesus. And as those who are already standing in you, Father, please take them deeper in you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for every one of us that when the storm of life will come, when the teen challenge, trials will come, Daddy, our root will not be uprooted from you in the name of Jesus. As a church, take us deeper in you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As you all know, in the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide,